Hi guys, welcome back. Okay guys, we have had a great week of running up so far. Ever since the bottom on May 12, May 13, Nasdaq had a run up from the lowest of 5% so far. And my portfolio was up around 30% since the lowest. So I really have no complaint for this run up. The Shanghai Composite Index had a very nice breakout since the lowest on May 11. It had a run up of 6.5%. That is why so far a lot of our Chinese stocks have been having a great run recently. But I think it's going to keep going to continue this trend. But at this point, after such a great and strong run, I do think it needs to rest a little bit first some slight pullback or consolidation for a few days before another run to continue the uptrend. Like I said on Friday on the Discord, I think our Chinese stocks have been significantly outperforming recently with a very good run up and it deserves a rest to gain more momentum. But even with such a good run up, Nasdaq still lacks volume. I think still a lot of money is waiting on the sideline. The fear and greed index is slightly better to be 38 right now versus a few days ago. It was near the extreme greed level. I think after such a strong and long correction, a lot of the investors had lost confidence. But I gotta say better fear than greed for us. Ever since the correction since February, even though a lot of things were starting to go down strong and hard, the fear and greed index was still at a great level. So the whole time I was monitoring this index and I have been waiting for the index to go to fear. I guess after such a long bull run in 2020, a lot of investors have been trained to be bullish and greedy. That's why it really needs a long and hard correction for the index to start to go down to fear. Another thing is that right now, the amount of put options are still at a high level. A lot of investors are betting against the market, large order of put option on the SP and call on the VIX. So that's why I have been saying that we are seeing a short squeeze run up right now. A lot of people have left the market or have gone on the short side. And I think the short squeeze is likely going to continue until the people who have left would come back in by FOMO or what the people who went short get squeezed really hard and would be forced to cover up the short position and then drive everything further up. The other day I read an article saying that the US stock market might be at risk because more and more retail investors are leaving. Well, that would explain why the fear and greed level is so much in fear. And the thing is, they want your money, but they don't want you to leave the game at all. So what's the best way to do it other than something like the AMC? To get the retail investors excited again to bring the hype back. So I actually think this time the runoff of AMC is different than last time. Last time was driven by retail investors against the Wall Street and this time I think the institutions are actually on the long side pushing it up because they want to bring the hype back. They don't want retail investors to leave the stock market. They're screaming out loud here, hey come back here, we are not finished. The game is still on. So that's why the whole time I've been saying that this is a short squeeze and we need to enjoy it while it lasts. That's why we have been taking full advantage of it. I said that we're gonna see divergence of stocks and money rotating very fast because we are not having extra capital in the stock market right now. We are using the same amount of capital rotating between different stocks at a very fast pace. And if we happen to catch on the right rhythm, we can take full advantage and maximize our profit. And so far for the last two weeks, we have been buying the dip for different stocks every day and they turn out mostly to be good profit in a short amount of time. So far, this is what's happening until we see extra capital, the money that's on the side coming back in, flowing back to the stock market. I've said it before, I will say it again. I think the growth stocks real reversal would be after the economy reopens. And we have seen the earning of the recovery stocks or value stocks that's highly relevant that would benefit from the economy reopen. That's when we would see sell the news action happen for recovery or value. And the growth stocks or tech stocks that have proved they can still grow after the economy reopen. And the things that happen during the COVID that change people's behavior would likely remain and not go away because of the economy reopening. That is when a lot of the capital would flow back into the growth stocks. So it's going to take time. And some stocks can prove that they can continue to grow after COVID while some other ones cannot. 
and at some point we will see divergence while some stocks would keep rebounding and the other ones might still make lower lows in the future or not make an all-time high in any time near so i think the s p 500 or the index would mostly go on the sideway for a long period of time but for now we can enjoy it while it lasts as long as the music is still on we can still dance but if the index would go on the sideway later or with the potential of a market correction later on i think the smart money would find ways to exit and the short squeeze the run up might be their exit strategy on the day of the big crash of Bitcoin, I made a video. I said how I think Bitcoin will go from there. Let's hear. So is the correction of Bitcoin over yet? Well, not really. I don't think so. I think we would rebound from such a hard crash and then slowly decrease with some time of cooling off. Meanwhile, I think the money from crypto would rotate so i said i thought bitcoin would rebound from such a hard crash and slowly decrease over time and that's what we have been seeing it slowly decrease after the rebound mainly to cool off and make people move back to the stocks and when crypto investors move back to stock market what do they do is they would go back to the more speculative growth stocks that's why in the past week we see some more speculative stocks growing quite well and I think this trend has not finished yet. I think there still will be more sell out from the crypto and come back to the growth stocks, the smaller caps. And that's why recently we see the smaller caps outperforming Nasdaq, the opposite from before. When Bitcoin was having a great run up with Nasdaq, a lot of growth stocks were reaching lower lows. Now let's go over our stocks. NIO had been growing quite well recently from the lowest to the highest, near 30% of growth. So a lot of people ask me if I think this is another bull trap. And my answer is no, I don't think so. The reason is we have been through the panic sell on March 5th. It was very fearful. A lot of investors had panic sell. And right away, what do they make you do after a panic sell? It's a bull trap with a strong rebound to make people FOMO back in. And then that is a bull trap. So that is why I didn't buy the dip for Neo back then. I bought the dip here and here. Because if this is panic sell, then this is frustrating sell. Panic sell is when the dropping is so fast that people have no time to react or think but hurry up to sell. This happened without much rational thinking at the moment but mainly driven by emotion. But frustrated sell was when they have decided that this investment has no future, is going nowhere. People are getting sick of it, getting tired of it, not moving but slowly moving down with a final shake. That would be frustrated sell and that usually would be the perfect golden Dip, the last dip before the run up. Back then, when it was rebounding strong, growing 17% in one day or 11% in one day, that was to make people chase, to make people FOMO. But when it grows like recently, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% every day, this is to slowly rise, to give you a chance to sell. So I think here, what they're doing is they want you to chase. But here, what they're doing is that they want to give you a chance to sell. So that is the big difference. So that's why I don't think this time is a bull trap. It had been growing for more than a week already. So I think it deserves a little rest, not too long, maybe just a few days, could be one to three days of backtesting or consolidation or consolidation and then continue the uptrend. I don't know whether there will be more black swan news or some other political issue coming out of nowhere. But at this point, I would say whenever we see bad news and the share price does not break the support, that would be the perfect time to buy the dip from here. Back in February, a lot of people asked me why I didn't buy the dip for NEO. I said that because I think the new EV sector would go through a long period of cooling off after a great run up in 2020. So because of the chip shortage that happened in February and also the rise of the traditional car players, as we saw, a lot of the traditional car companies were starting to go heavier and heavier in EV. So even though I think NEO has started an uptrend, I still stand by this point i said it's gonna cool off at least until the second half of this year too early next year 
and so far we have seen the share price going on the sideway doing a cool off meanwhile i think the traditional car companies can keep on rising this has nothing to do with the fundamentals i still believe in the company's fundamental I'm still very bullish on neo in the long term but in the short term i would think the traditional car companies might outperform in the short term mainly based on what i think the institutions would think they usually create some distraction and make people lose faith in this company when they slowly establish their position and accumulate more and more share at a cheaper price when people sell out of frustration or lack of patience last time i've recommended jelly it's listed in the hong kong exchange the u.s ticker is g-e-l-v-f or g-e-l-y-y -Y. it had the correction from the highest of 36 to the lowest of 17 so near 53 percent of correction they have partnered up with baidu to make ev they own volvo out of all the chinese traditional car companies i think jelly had the most probability to transform into the new ev world let me know if you are interested for me to do a video on jelly alone i want to see how many of you are interested first but getting back to neo i think right now if you're a long-term investor like me i think it's okay to just hold it and forget about the short-term price action because i really don't know how long it would take for the new ev sector to finish cooling off and for the short Short term if you want to buy you can buy at a pullback on every dip that's created by the bad news or black swan eh is still running i think it still have more room to grow for now in a short term because there was so much effort made already to make people sell this is to sell out of frustration for a long period of time of lying down on the floor and as i said before this day and this day was to rise a little bit and drop back down to make people sell so much effort had been done already i don't think it's gonna stop right here so i think it might continue lkco is still running with a slight pullback i share on discord i trim some at 1.6 only 10 percent of my holding if it can dip back to let's say below 1.4 or 1.3 i'll consider getting it back it's only 10 percent mainly because after the run up the holding is getting large again so i just trimmed 10 percent i gotta say lkco is really the best looking penny stock in terms of the movement and the chart it's still on an uptrend overall even though it can pull back or consolidate a little bit. Overall, our Chinese stocks have had a great run up this week, so it deserves a little bit rest. So after a little bit of time, we should be back on again. For TAL, I said that I have bought the dip at 35 and trim at near 42 on the next day, but I went back in on Thursday morning. I bought in again at 37.39. 37.3 was the lowest of that day. I could have sold on Friday when it reached near 40 one but i decided to hold it longer this time tomorrow the u.s stock market is closed and the canadian market is still open so i'll be watching out for my canadian stocks i bought some dip during this week before i end this video i have something to say during this whole correction it was a very much roller coaster ride for me not really because of the share price movement it's completely normal for stock price to do up and down so it's more the comments so i apologize for not having a lot of videos posted recently because i was in this phase of self-reflecting and consolidation of my channel because since i opened my youtube channel only in january for a few months so a lot of things are still new for me there are people who never show appreciation when you're right but the moment you make one wrong judgment they would right away come to put the blame and a lot of personal attack maybe it makes them feel better by breaking your confidence i don't know on top of that i do a lot of self-blaming already so it really made me start to be more careful about what I share but at the same time i do have a lot of supporting comments that are quite encouraging so i really started to pick up and start to think the point for me to open my youtube channel was because i wanted to share my point of view my own perspective on how i see things so then you are watching and you can get a second opinion or other perspective so there is really no reason to pull back just because i'm afraid to be wrong or to be blamed as a matter of fact 
fact, we should fully take advantage of that. To give you an example, on this day, early March, when LKCO was dropping to the bottom, I remember some of my Discord members messaged me and said that, Joyce, do not open your YouTube channel to read the comments. So that day was when I had the most terrifying comments on my YouTube channel. And it turned out to be the bottom for LKCO. And with the recent attack of the Chinese stock recently, I kept saying that I see the Chinese stocks breaking out as a beginning of a bull run. And I said one of the good signs was because I see more and more comments putting blame and hating Chinese stocks. So I guess the trick is really instead of being bothered by the bad comments, we should fully take advantage of that as an indicator of maybe the worst is behind us. So after I've thought this through, after this consolidation period, I have decided to do what I always wanted to do, share my own point of view without being bothered by anything because that is what I wanted to do since the beginning. This is just my own passion. Starting from here, I will be posting my series of videos and the order would be following the vote on my Discord. So I hope you don't mind I post too many videos because that's what I would do from here. Okay, now if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a big, big like and write me a great comment and I will see you tomorrow. That's it guys. Hope you can find my videos helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a big like. Thank you.